What is up, you kids? Come on. Listen, I was listening to some praise and worship now. I was going, this love you have for me, it goes me. I was having so much fun. Hey, actually, now that we're speaking about praise and worship, why don't we get into a time of praise and worship? So why don't you get up on your feet and let's Dance. Get up on your feet. Get up on your feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you. You're still sitting down. Get up on your feet. Get up on your feet. Hey, before we get into praise and worship, though, I want to remind you guys of some important rules. And these rules are our God rules. Our God rules. Now, for those of you in our different locations, Mark Boss, I heard you guys can scream. I want you to tell me, what does the G stand for? Whoa, okay, okay. Mark Boss, that was definitely loud. Table view, I know you guys can scream even louder. What does the O stand for? Come on, obey your leader. And what does the D stand for? Do not disturb. These are our God rules, guys, and we need to um, apply it during praise and worship, and during the teaching. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into our praise and worship. My hope it has a name, the reason I believe. And it's written on my heart. It's flowing through my veins, just like a melody. Gives me faith so I sing Oh, here I am, come take control I want your will, not my own If there's one thing that I know It's that my God will never let me go Oh, oh, oh I know my God is always in control Oh
awesome. Now we're going to get into a time of worship where we get to sit down and just speak to God. So we're doing a song called Reckless Love. I know you guys know this song. And pretty much talks about how God loves us so much. He even let Jesus, his one and only son, die on the cross for our sins. And that's absolutely amazing. So I think that it's time for you guys to just sit in God's presence and thank him that he loves you so much because nothing can separate us from God's love. Now let's get into it. spoke a word, you were singing over me, you have been so, so good to me, before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me, you have been so, so kind to me. Still you love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so
find my way out Watch my troubles come surround I was lost, now I'm found Like a glimmer of hope That will never let me go You bring peace to my soul Come on, let's sing together Hello? Hello? Okay. All right, cool. Give me two seconds, two seconds. Hey, view kids. How are you guys doing? Listen, I'm so sorry. I, I just got off a call now with my cousin from um, Jobik. And guess what? He is coming down to Cape Town. Come on. And he is in grade five. So I have some really, really exciting news for him. I want to tell him that he can come join us at View Rep this coming Friday. Just give me two seconds. You got, I'm going to put him on speaker and we can speak to him together. You guys ready? Cool. All right, my phone's not going on. Just give me two seconds. Oh, no. Few kids, my phone died. Okay, just give me, let's put it on charge. I think I've got a charger here. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Give me two seconds. Are you guys well, though? Are you guys good? Okay, and I'm going to put it on charge here, and then... After our teaching, I'm going to give him a call, right? I'm going to give him a call to tell him this is this is some exciting news. But before we go any further, I just want to say hey to you guys. So if you are at our table view location, I want you to shout out something for me. I want you to say there is power in the Gospels. Come on, if you're in our table view location, shout that out for me. Whoa, table view, I know that you guys can do a lot better than that. Shout out, there is power in the Gospels for me. Okay, all right, that was decent, that was decent, that was decent. But I know Blurbig Beach Hotel, you guys can shout really, really loud. So if you are at Blurbig Beach, why don't you shout out, there is power in the Gospel. Whoa, okay, okay. I think, I'm not being biased or anything, but I think Blaubeck Beach won that one. But we still have Mark Boss. Mark Boss, if you guys think you guys can shout it louder, why don't you shout out, there is power in the gospel. Okay, all right. I think it's a tie between Blaubeck Beach and uh, Mark Boss. Table view, I'm a little bit disappointed, eh? I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to give you guys one more chance, but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed. You guys can shout out this power in the gospel. Table view, three, two, one. Okay, that's the table view I know. Come on, guys, I am super excited for today's teaching. Now, as you guys saw, my phone died. And it needed power, so I had to put it on charge so that it can get power so that I can tell my cousin, uh, tell my cousin about this exciting news. Well, guess what? That's the same thing with us and God. We need the power of God to tell other people the news of God, yeah? So we need the power of God. We need God in order for us to tell people about how great God is and how God can be their best friend. I'm going to pray for us real quick before we get into today's story. Father, Thank you for this day that you have brought to us, Lord. Father, I just pray for each and every child in our different locations, online, God. I pray that they are able to receive today's word, Lord, and that they can not just receive it, but they can actually apply it in their lives, Lord. I pray this in your precious name. Amen. So as a lot of you know, Paul is one of my favorite characters in the Bible, and the people that know me really well are saying, but Sibelo, you say that about every character in the Bible. Well, Paul is definitely, he's in my top three. I don't know if I have a top three, but he, if I did have a top three, Paul would be in my top three. I love, love Paul. Paul was actually a missionary. So Paul would go to different places and he would tell them about the power of God and he would tell them about Jesus and he would tell them that they need to, be, that they need to make Jesus their best friend right? And so Paul went to this specific place called Corinth, the city of Corinth, where he taught um, the Corinthians. So people from Corinth are called Corinthians. And he taught them about Jesus. And these guys were like really, really impressed with Paul. They were like, how can someone be so wise? Have you ever met that person, that one person who's just really, really smart? These guys were like, wow, 
Paul, you were so smart. And they were really, really impressed with Paul. But all Paul wanted to do was tell them about how great God is. And all Paul wanted to do was tell them that they should make Jesus their best friend. And do you know how Paul, because Paul traveled around a lot, do you know how he would um, tell people about God? He would actually write them letters. He would write them letters. An interesting fact about the Church of Corinthian, by the way, they met in houses. So they didn't meet in like a big building like we meet, like you're the one that you're in right now. They actually met in people's houses. How cool is that? So anyways, Paul, like, like he wrote all these different churches letters telling them, hey, you need to make Jesus your best friend. Hey, Jesus died on the cross for you. Paul was doing all these amazing things. And I just so happened, and I shouldn't be telling you guys this, but I'm going to tell you anyways, I just so happened to have one of the letters that Paul wrote. And so I'm going to dive down, then I'm going to jump back up, and then Paul is going to read the letter. Are you guys ready? Okay, three, two, one. Hi, hi, hi. It is I. Paul, Paul, the Apostle Paul, how are you guys doing? This is a letter that I wrote to the Church of Corinth. Um, for those of you who would like to see the letter, here is the letter. Here is the letter, Church of Corinth. And this is what I said. Let us open the letter. I told them, when I come to preach the gospel to you, I did not come with lots of wisdom and big words. I shared with you the testimony of God. I kept it all clear and simple, who Jesus is and what he has done for us. I felt scared and weak when I came to you. Nothing I could have said in my own strength could have impressed you. But the good news I brought to you, the message of Jesus came through because of God's power, the power of the gospel. Now your faith can be not in my words or wisdom, but in God's power. This is a letter from me, Paul. Whoa! Did you guys enjoy Paul's letter? I, I enjoyed it so much. And I love, love, I love everything that Paul writes because Paul is so wise, but I love what Paul says. He says that it is not from his power. So everyone is impressed with him and says, wow, Paul, you're such a great writer. And Paul's like, no, it's not me. It's God's power. It is God's power. It is not me. And I'm going to be very honest with you guys. And you guys can be honest with me too. Have you guys ever been scared to tell people about Jesus? I know I have. Have you guys ever been scared that how will people react when I tell them about God? I know I have. Will they still like me? Will they still, will they still talk to me? I know I have. And I know it can be scary sometimes talking to your friends about Jesus. And I'm going to be honest with you here as well. I'm scared right now while I'm doing this teaching to you guys. It scares me. It, I'm scared and sometimes I feel weak. Like you guys should see me before I do a teaching. I'm genuinely, I'm really, really scared. I feel, sometimes I feel like my stomach is eating me up. I just feel, yeah, my stomach is eating me up. My stomach is eating itself. I just feel so scared and so weak. But I trust in God and I know that God will give me the power and that's what you need to do as well. You need to pray, God, give me the power to speak to people about your word, to tell people about Jesus, to tell people about the fact that Jesus died on the cross for me. We need the power of God. And we need to pray to God that he gives us the power. And this is a newspaper. I'm going to tell you something that I do. I fill myself up, I, fill my, I like to fill myself up with things that are actually going to help me. And we're going to go through the newspaper, we're going to play a little game, we're going to go through the newspaper, and it looks like I have two newspapers, I'm going to put the one away. We're going to go through the newspaper, and we're going to see how many good stories and how many bad stories we can find. So, for your right hand, fist up your right hand, do this with your right hand, 
we're going to count all the good stories. And then with our left hand, we're going to count all the bad stories that we read. You guys ready for it? Okay, okay, okay. Let's do this. First page. S&P worries about SA's spending habits. Ooh, South Africa spending a lot of money. That sounds to me like a bad story. So you guys can put your finger up for bad story. All right, cool. Children being kidnapped. Oh, that is definitely a bad story. All right, cool. Next page. That's, another, that's two fingers up for bad stories. Gender-based violence. Oh, that is another bad story. That's violence. Okay, let's see here. Oh, no, people getting murdered. That is another bad story. All right, bombings in Thailand. Wow, that is another bad story. As you guys can see, I've just, just about gone through this whole newspaper, and all this newspaper has is bad stories. And this is just to show you that it's so easy to to hear bad stories, it's so easy to see bad stories because bad things or bad news is everywhere around us. I mean, if you want to read bad news, just go onto your social media. There is bad news everywhere. And we need to be careful not to fill ourselves up with bad things. But instead, we should fill ourselves up with good things. Now, but the thing is, when you fill yourself up with good thing, it takes a little bit more effort. So good things take a little bit more effort effort. And the best place to find good stories, the best place to find something that will help you is actually in your Bible. If you want to read good stories, if you want to see how God can come through for you, read your Bible. I mean, look at David and Goliath. The whole city was scared of Goliath, but because God knew because, but because David knew that God was with him, he managed to defeat Goliath. I mean, just look at Moses. Moses had a stuttering tongue. He couldn't speak to people well, but he knew that God was with him. So he managed to um, escape Israel with, with, with all the Israelites. Just look at Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers, but he knew that God was with him. Just look at Jesus. They killed him and they said there's no way that he was going to rise up again. And he rose up because Jesus understood that God was with him. And view kids, I just pray that you guys can understand that God is with you. God is with you. Even like, he wants you to tell people about his word. He wants you to tell your friends in your classroom. He wants you to tell your friends in your sports team. He wants you to tell the world that who he is. And you need to understand that you shouldn't be scared. It's okay to be scared, but you need to understand that God is with you. And so even now, I told you guys, I get scared. I feel weak. I feel scared whenever I have to talk to you guys, whenever I have to talk to guys at ViewRep, whenever, whenever I have to talk to guys at View City. I get scared. I genuinely get scared, but I understand that God is with me. I understand that God is with me. And I'm going to get into our points now. And our first point is that you have good news. You, yes you, yeah, uh-uh, yes you, stop looking away, yes you, you have good news. You have good news. And I'm going to tell you some of the good news we see in the Bible with one scripture. In John 3 verse 16, that scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is good news. God gave his one and only son, Jesus, so that we can go to heaven one day, so that we can make Jesus our best friend, so that we can tell people about Jesus. God gave up his one and only son for you. And now he wants you to tell people about who Jesus is. You have good news. You guys saw it earlier with my phone dying. I wanted to tell my cousin the good news that he can come to view rep. It is good 
news, and we have to tell everyone this good news. Point number two, we need to be fully charged. We need to be fully charged. Can you guys agree with me that since my phone was dead, I couldn't call my, call my um, cousin? That's exactly with us. If we're not spending time with God, if we're not in a relationship with God, we're sort of dead. But we need to be charged up with God. And how do we be charged up with God? We worship God. We pray. Last week we learned about communion. We do communion. We read our Bible. We build our relationship with God. We charge ourselves up with God so that when we go out there, we can tell people the good news. And my final point is go and tell. Can I tell you something? Since you have heard what I've been saying to you the the whole time, and you've been coming to view kids maybe for one week, or maybe this is your first time. Maybe you've been coming for six years. Maybe you were actually born in a family that was already coming to view church, and you came to view kids. That means that you've been listening to all these things, all these teachings, and you have the responsibility. You and I have the responsibility to tell people about who Jesus is. We have a responsibility. We have the responsibility to tell people who Jesus is. And in Mark, if you're taking notes, which you should be, in Mark 16 verse 15, Jesus actually says, go into the world and preach the good news. He didn't say, hey, when you hear the teachings, when you hear um, everything that is taught, he didn't say, keep it to yourself. He said, go to the world and tell everyone about the good news. Tell everyone about Jesus. And now you guys are thinking, Sibelo, how do I go to the world and tell them? You start with your school. You start in your classroom. You start telling the people in your classroom about Jesus. You start inviting them to church. In your sports teams, you start telling your, the people that you play hockey with, the people that you play tennis with, the people that you play netball, the people that you play soccer with. You start telling them about who Jesus is and inviting them to church so that they can make Jesus their best friend, so that they can come to church. They can also hear what you're hearing, and then they can also tell more people, and then they, those people can tell more people, and those people can tell more people about who Jesus is. We few kids, we have a responsibility to tell people who Jesus is. And it's going to be scary. It's going to be, you're going to feel weak sometimes. You're going to think, oh, I don't think I can tell that person. That person's too cool. That person would never come to church. But no, we need to tell people about who Jesus is. And now some of you are thinking, whoa, okay. So, Bello, you've been saying we need to make Jesus our best friend. We need to tell people and tell them that they need to make Jesus their best friends and they should come to church. But, so, Bello, what if I haven't made Jesus my best friend? That's the first place to start. We first start with making Jesus our best friend. So if you've never made that decision before, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to help you make that decision right now. I'm going to help you make the decision of saying, Jesus You are my best friend, and I am not ashamed of you, Jesus. So I need everyone to close your eyes. Everyone. Blauberg, close your eyes. Mark Boss, close your eyes. Table View, close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes. And if you're saying right now, Sibelo, I've never made Jesus my best friend, I want you to just put your hand up. Put your hand up. If that is you right now and you're saying, Sibelo, I want to make Jesus my best friend. I've never done it before. I want to go out into the world and tell everyone about who Jesus is. I want you to put, and you're saying, I need to make him my best friend. I want you to put your hand up. And then all of us together as a View Kids family, from Blobick to Table View to Mark Boss, we're going to pray together. You guys can repeat after me. Jesus Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you that because of you, I can go to heaven. Jesus, I want to tell everyone about you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on. Guys, listen. I had so much fun doing the teaching today. You guys got to hear from Paul. We did. I had so much fun. We read the newspaper, sort of. And I just really want to encourage you guys. Don't let this stay here. Tell your friends about Jesus. This is not just a teaching for Sunday, but this is something that you guys can do during the week. We're actually going to get into our quiet time questions now. So make sure that you are in your small groups and we're going to discuss these questions in our small groups. So let me just grab the questions and let's discuss them. So the first question is, how do we charge ourselves up with good? You guys remember my phone? Now, how do we charge ourselves up with good? Question number two, where can you tell people about Jesus? Where can you tell people about Jesus? It could be at your school. It could be with your sports team. It could be with family, friends. Where can you tell people about Jesus? Number three, have you made Jesus your best friend? Have you made Jesus your best friend? Because we all want to tell everyone about best friend, right? I know when I was in school, I used to tell everyone, hey, this is my best friend. Hey, 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 this is my best friend. Oh, that's my best friend. Are you telling people about your best friend, Jesus? And have you made him your best friend? So you guys have two minutes to discuss these questions in your small groups. Like a glimmer of hope that will never let me go You bring peace to my soul guys enjoy small groups or what? Small groups are always fun. Small groups, genuinely guys, small groups are always fun. When you get older, we, what we have is called view groups. View groups are amazing. View groups are like your small groups. They're really, really cool. Um, so we're going to get to today's bottom line. Are you guys ready for today's bottom line? It is, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my mic down. Over here, like this. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm going to speak louder. But it's what today's bottom line is. Everyone on your feet, on your feet, on your feet, on your feet, on your feet. Okay, today's bottom line is I am not ashamed of the gospel. You guys ready for it? I am not ashamed of the gospel. One more time. Let's do it together. I am not ashamed of of the gospel. Come on. Guys, I had so much fun learning with you guys today. And really, I just want to encourage you guys. Apply what you've learned. Go tell people about Jesus. Go tell people about 
Jesus. I had so much fun. I hope you guys did as well. I will see you guys next week. Cheers, everyone. Whoa. Okay. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Sorry, guys. I'm just looking for my hair because today's service was absolutely mind-blowing. So just give me two seconds. Give me two seconds. Oh, found it. Wow. Did you guys enjoy today or what? The praise and worship was amazing. The teaching was amazing. The small groups were amazing. I had so much fun. Did you guys have fun? Come on, I had so much fun today. As you guys see, as you guys can see, it blew my hair away. I can't wait to see you guys next week. And don't forget to invite all your friends. Invite all your friends. I spoke about it in the teaching. We need to invite our friends to church so that they can experience the love that we experience from Jesus. So come on, can we pray before we leave? Everyone close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. Father, thank you for such an amazing day, Lord. Thank you for each and every child that is in our buildings, Lord. God, I just pray that they can apply the teaching that they learned today and that they can tell each and every one of their friends about what they learned and they can invite them to church next week. And all of God's children say, Amen. Come on, guys. I had so much fun and I will see you next week. Let's go!